Today I'm looking at this uh, flashing light which was used for roadworks. Um, I'm not sure if they still actually use them anymore. I haven't seen one for a while but these used to be used up until sort of the 80s or 90s at least. I can't say I've really noticed them since then. Uh, this is actually what was it, a contractor flashing probably the model or brand or something. Uh, type A flashing which I think is to do with the, the types of light um, the regulations or whatever, there's a type A flashing, I think there's like a type B and um, that doesn't flash, it's just permanently on uh, replace the batteries at 4.7 volts on closed circuit so this must run on 6 volts made in Australia by Deneef Signs um, I think that company's still going and they do a lot of the road signs for um, anyone working on the roads basically so these basically have a, a reflector around the outside so even if they're not flashing they'll certainly light up and possibly in the car headlights they will uh, also the reflector will also light up because they're not not the brightest probably so that they don't annoy drivers too much uh, basically these are double sided ones I think there are ones in America and stuff which have like a reflector inside so only one side but this light can be seen on both sides uh, also comes with a, a mount so you can put it on your post or on your sign or something and a pin there that goes in it's got like a triangular head um, obviously tamper proof or theft proof I guess is the idea and that actually goes inside this thing as well through that hole making it harder to get access of or to uh, it's also got a little hole here although at the moment because I've got no batteries I think the unit slid down in there but you can actually switch it on and off um, by putting like a metal pin or something down through that hole um, these are light sensitive as well now this is the inside of it so basically it's made to hold two six volt lantern batteries something another thing you don't see around these days either and they were extremely expensive or used to be pretty expensive back in the day given how long they lasted which wasn't all that long probably not so bad with something like this but if you had a decent torch it didn't last the best so it's basically just hollow down into the the case there so this inside piece just fits in you've got your lamp slots up into that hole and yeah if you've got the switch face in that hole so it just sort of sits in there fairly loose um, it's got these metal strips here to connect to the batteries in the bottom here it shows you how to connect your batteries up with negative on the middle strip and positive to the side and I guess if you put them around the other way as well as long as the negative which is I guess always in the middle of the battery yeah it looks like it because if that's a middle terminal no matter how you turn that around the positive is always going to be on the outer so they've obviously designed it to be that way I did actually make a note on this when I pulled it apart earlier that it runs on 6 volt and I'll put negative, positive, positive there. There are the two positive strips just joined together with a jumper wire, of course. Um, you've just got your, looks like a bayonet, yeah, bayonet lamp. 1850 Japan. Doesn't actually say the voltage on it, which is pretty annoying. Just got a spring down in there and a little bit of metal on the side to press against the lamp and connect to that. And then we've just got one of these sort of lamp type switches that we used on similar to the ones used on 240 volt lights. Probably not so much these days, but in the past. And down in that hole there, the old one, ones of these used to have a thing, maybe 10 cent size, Australian 10 cent size. Some sort of thing, it used to sit on the top here, a potted little circuit with a LDR in it to sense the light. This thing's got this tiny down in this stem here. I don't think I can really get it out but there's a tiny little heat shrink thing in there probably like a little thick film or something there's some sort of surface mount thing no doubt and that um, obviously gets a bit of light through this which is normally yeah, sort of pushed up inside here somewhere so enough light gets through this translucent plastic and I assume there's a flashing circuit in there I don't think these light bulbs looks like a standard light bulb but I don't think there's any sort of fancy flashing on or anything even though such things did exist so I'll have a look at this uh, if I switch on my bench power supply to 6 volts and find the leads I'm 
So yeah, we've got positive on the outside, negative on the inside. I don't know if this is on or off. Oh, yeah, if I cover that up to remove the light, and as soon as I let some light into that, it stops flashing and I assume if I press that, yeah, we get nothing. So there's no, whoops, there goes my power connection. Yeah, just that's enough to get this thing flashing. Now I'm not gonna use this for anything outdoors, so I'll just sort of make a nice little display piece. If I can connect onto that and stay on there. So I might just hook up some and again, as I said, you can see both sides, it flashes on. But I might just hook up some wires to this so I can hook a little power pack or something up to it. A little plug pack thing off the 240 volts. And yeah, like I say, just use it as a display piece. I think it'll look all right in the workshop in the man cave type of thing. Because um, I'm not going to bother getting these batteries for it. And yeah, unlikely to ever use it for anything like that again, so... I think I'll just solder a wire onto where all this solder is already, so it can always be removed again. Not that I think you ever need to. And um, yeah, just power it off. I'll just run that through this hole in the bottom here. I might as well have a look at how that's set up. Now the other problem with this is without the batteries in there, it's going to be loose, but there are a couple of round, some light might be good. A couple of little round mounting or locating things here, so I think I can just I don't think I've got to screw that big. I was going to say I could just put a screw down in there. Um, even if I stuff some spaghetti or something down there, that would just be a fit in there. Like the wall plug stuff and put a couple of screws in there. Just doesn't need to be very strong just to hold that in place. Now the way these, they obviously fit with that key bit where that plastic is there. That's where the external bit screws in. And there is some... I think that mounts up under there like that and then we put our pin through which doesn't really want to go in for some reason there it's going. that should go in further than that I think but anyway that's the general idea you would screw that right in and then the light comes with this this mounting piece, I'm not sure what that might fit on, even on a star picket or something. Or it might be made for some other sort of squarish pole or something, I'm not sure what they used to mount one of these on. Whatever they had around their worksite, I guess, is protection against pedestrians and stuff going on the roadworks. I wonder if I can undo this because I've now jammed this in here a bit. It's definitely a good anti-theft device because I can't get it back off. Yeah, just need to get some side cutters down in there and grip it, push it backwards a bit and she's back out so I don't know why that's gripping. I don't think this case lines up perfectly, maybe it's meant to be a tight fit but it, yeah, that should go right down before it even starts to screw into anything. It's just very tight, probably because this is a brand new one by the look of it and hasn't been used. The only lantern batter I've got anymore is actually this ancient one, which I found in a, in a roof space. Which actually says it's got four size F cells in it, number 509, paper cased, so it's pretty old. And Ever ready Australia, made in Australia, so that's how old that is. I don't know when they last made batteries here, probably not as long ago as I think, but but yeah, it's seen better days. But you don't see these old paper case things anymore, but so that's got a middle terminal which must have been our, our negative. And I'm not sure where the other terminal went, they're all soldered, so it must have been on the end with that green corrosion here. You can see where something's a little slot in the top bit of cardboard or it's probably something other than cardboard so that would have been the positive and the negative but yeah I haven't bought one of these or I had a torch for one of these in a long long time 
But yeah, there's an old Ever Ready Nine Lives lantern battery. Does that recovers power between uses? Maybe so bounces back for extra life and six volts. But yeah, I don't think I've ever seen four size F cells written on there before, or written on one of these. And the later ones just they're all the metal cased ones. I think they're plastic cased now. But anyway, that's a bit of old history there. But yeah, that would have fitted a couple of them down in there. Not sure if they had lights back when they had these batteries. I'm not sure when this is from, probably the 60s or something. The house that it came out of was built back in those sort of times, late 50s, I think. So this must be going back to the 60s. I don't think even in the 70s they had paper-coated ones, but you never know. But anyway, that's a bit of a interesting thing on the side there. Okay, so I've got some red and black cable here. I'll just tin the ends on that. I've already stripped them. And you'll just solder onto this existing... No, there is no existing solder on the... There must be one on the negative somewhere, but there's not. So positive, I'll go where the light's... ...been soldered on here. It's a bit of heat to get these things heated up. Ooh. So where on earth are the negatives soldered on the back? That's why it doesn't have anything there. I might have to crank up the soldering iron for this, but I'll just solder in the middle here where nothing's... No battery's going to be touching that bit, I don't think. Just in case I want to revert it to original, which is pretty unlikely. And the switch faces that little hole. I don't need a real long bit of wire here. Probably should really power back and wire it into this. I think if I come out these holes or should I just go in there and out the back there? Then I can sit it wherever I want. That might actually be the better option I think. So I'll leave a little bit of length on these. And if I feed them through is that the right way up. And then through there, oh, actually, I better. But yeah, that should in theory work if I go like that. And then I can just clip that into place. And then I can just have the front of it facing the other way. That's got all the brand and stuff on it. So that should work. Again, without having to drill holes or do any modifications, then I can sit it on its base if I want to. The only other thing is I need to make this piece stay in place and again I'd prefer not to modify it or put any screws in because I can't really screw into that without coming out the other side of the case. Could almost just put a bit of tape on there, probably be enough. So using some sort of screw I found X came out of a car. No idea exactly what but that and about four washers seem to do the job. It's a nice thick screw and it bites in. Just enough. Those four washers. So yeah, just screw it down into the these mounting things that are in here, little hollow things. Let's get our wire under it at this rate, but I might move that just so as to not damage the wire. I don't think it'll do much, but yeah, that's got it. It's a little loose still by the look of it. Might need one more washer on that end. Oh, it's alright. Yeah, it's 
slight bit of play there, but nothing much. At least that won't fall down in the box. Inside this, the light. You can press the switch if you want to, which I doubt I'm going to need to, because this will be powered off something I can turn on and off at a power point. So I'm going to put those wires back through there. But they don't want to go now. Come on, one through. Oh, come on, get in there. There we go. Uh, probably should even put these bits. I think they were originally in the light, so... I'll put the, the mounting kit in there. That way... Oops, I forgot to put it through the outer bit. Because I got distracted by the mounting kit. At least I can find that mounting kit again if I ever need it. Will be a bit rattly, but anyway. That's already flashing even in this light. That'll probably stop it. Once it's standing upright, it tends to flash. But yeah, they're designed to come on sort of at dusk, I think, not. Complete darkness. There, yeah, it's a bit of a toy and these were quite an iconic thing in Australia. I used to see these around all the time when they were doing roadworks. And sort of those kids were kind of fascinated by them a bit. But um, yeah, like I said, I don't think I've seen them probably for 20 years or something on the road. But this one turned up second hand. And it's like I say, it's in basically new condition. So I thought, why not? I'll have one of those. And yeah, I can just sit in the garage here or somewhere. Just as a bit of a novelty. But anyway, thanks for watching.